for a lot of projects, I would spend a ton of time bringing down the audio so that all of the dialogue would be easily heard. And in some situations, that is the best option, manually going in and reducing the audio for a certain area where dialogue is, and then bringing it back up to the normal level or higher. Uh, but there are a couple of things that we can use to make this process significantly faster, depending on what your project really entails. If it entails a lot of dialogue, maybe you're doing an interview where you're walking through an office building or something of that nature, where they're talking for a little bit, and then you have a bunch of B-roll going on where you don't really have any audio and you wanna bring the audio levels back up. But then when you have some inserts for audio, people talking about dialogue or just voiceovers, uh, you want that audio to come down. And instead of going in and manually pulling it down and then bringing it back up, there are some tools that we can use where DaVinci Resolve will look at a particular audio track and depending on if there is any audio there, it'll bring down the other tracks that we pick. We can bring down those audio levels and this is called side chaining. So let's dive into how all of that works. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre set tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. So here is what I'm working with so far. I just recorded an audio track right before filming. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. Side chaining takes a lot of work out of the process. Okay, so that is my audio. Maybe in between here, or maybe there's some B-roll before this or after this, but whatever it is, we only really wanna bring the audio down for these particular areas. Now, what we could do is we could bring in our audio here, and then what we used to do is just keyframe, you know, a little bit ahead, keyframe here, come in, bring this down, make this lower, come to the end, keyframe here, come out a little bit, and then we'd make it louder again, right? So we would have something like this. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas. I actually would probably bring that down a bit more, maybe like a 15, and then here a 15 as well. So it's normal volume. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. And then you would have to continuously keep going through and doing that over and over and over and over, right? Instead of doing this, let's just make DaVinci Resolve do this for us. We're gonna jump over into Fairlight. And then in Fairlight here, we don't really have video, so we won't see it here, but we're just specifically going off of this. And what we're gonna go into is the dynamics. So we'll click in here. And then in the dynamics, we have the compressor. And here we have the side chain, so we can send and listen. In a lot of sense, you're gonna wanna pick specific tracks just for dialogue. Now, it doesn't have to only be one, because maybe you have multiple people with multiple mics, right? So maybe you have uh, different audio tracks for mic one and mic two, and maybe a camera mic or whatever it is, or maybe you have a voiceover on a different, right? So all of them that we want to have affect another channel, we're gonna set all of those up as the send, right? So we're gonna click in here and we're gonna click on all of them as the send. So we can see here the audio track one, that's my dialogue. So I'm gonna come into the dynamics and I'm going to hit send, right? So now it's going to be sending. So now when I turn that on, now we have the side chain. Now, if I play this, today we're diving in we can see that the side chain is now has some type of audio getting passed through it. Think of it as like another channel, but we can't actually hear the channel. DaVinci Resolve listens to it. And here is showing that there's audio being fed into that channel. Getting better audio. Okay, so now that we know that there's audio being fed into that channel, now we need to make another channel be affected by it using the compressor. And I guess I should dive into the compressor settings and how they work. 
So when I was initially recording this tutorial, I didn't really make it very digestible about how the compressor works. So here's my second go at that. So to do all of this, we're going to be using the dynamics area on the Fairlight page. And you can see the dynamics page right here, or the dynamics area right here. We'll just double click in here and we're going to be using the compression area. If you've never used the compressor, pretty much what it does is you can take the really loud areas of your track and you can bump it down a little bit. And that's pretty much what we're going to do. So we'll turn this on and this up here is kind of misleading. So we don't really want to pay attention up here and I'll, I'll show you an easier way to understand this. But if we look here in threshold and ratio, these are going to be the, the big areas. And I'll explain this, this more has to do with timing, but up here we want to take a look at this. So we have the threshold and you can see we can go from 50 to zero or negative 50 to zero. And if you look over here, we have negative 50 and zero. So this is going to be the threshold where the compressor compressor starts, like where it starts to take effect. So to make this very simple, uh, we'll first turn this off and I'm actually going to mute this so we don't hear it, but I'm going to play it. And we can see that this waveform is very tall, right? It's if we turn this on and go all the way to 50, right? So that's all the way in here. And then we can take the ratio. How much compression do we want? We could have it 1.2 to one, right? So that's a small difference, right? It's a very small difference. It's only 0.2 compared to the normal that we're adding compression to, or we can compress it 20 times there. So 20 to one. So at 50 is where it's going to start and anything above it, it's going to get compressed 20 to one, right? So now if I to play that, we can see that that waveform is significantly smaller, right? So we're really compressing it. But the thing to note here is when it's all the way down here at 40, it's almost going to be um, unauditable. We're not going to be able to hear it. So we have to find that perfect balance and we might not want to compress the audio that much. So I would typically say like if I'm doing dialogue or something, I want it to be like in the 30s ish area. It can be like right in here. So we can bring this all the way to like, let's say 30 something like 30. Sure. And then we can increase this. And this is going to be obviously to taste how much compression do you want? And if we take a look at our waveform, see how we have these peaks and valleys, that's what we're going to be um, pretty much compressing. All So well, if we drew like a straight line across anything that's above, how much are we going to knock it down to wherever that line is that goes straight across, right? So that's going to be the compression area. Now you're still gonna have it go up and down, you know what I mean? It's not gonna be a comp completely flat because obviously there, you know, that that would completely destroy the, the song, but it's just going to bring everything down a bit. So now if I have this, we can see that it's going obviously above 30, but 30 is where it's going to be taking the effect. And currently we have uh, 2.7 to one. The more we would increase this, let's go back. The more that we would increase this, obviously the less of spikiness we'll have. We'll get sort of like a flatter sound and you know, it, it's not gonna be full, that fulfilling in audio, but what we're doing is we're trying to hide this uh, uh, audio track that we have playing behind our uh, our dialogue. So down here we have the attack, hold, and release, and pretty much what that is is it's going to dictate how long when we have like one of these spikes. Uh, it's going to say how long is it going to take to to add this ratio, the, the reduction, right? So this is 1.4 milliseconds. So you can increase that and think of it like a curve. So, so let's say this input is our audio track, right? Of our vocals. So once our vocals come in, then there's gonna be this attack area, right? So it's gonna be a, a move to uh, add that reduction of audio volume and then our, our vocals stop, right? Our vocals stop and then there's gonna be a hold, right? Because there might be a slight breath and then we go again. We don't want it to already, you know, be decaying and then, um, you know, as it's decaying, then it goes back, right? So then the audio has this weird, you might hear this where it like goes down and then it goes back or excuse me, it, it's low and then it starts to increase. And then because we start talking again, it gets pulled back down. So there'll be that little distance of hold, right? Because maybe we're taking a breath or not. And then we have the decay as well. So that's pretty much the three of these working together. 
and it's it, it's really just a balance between how much how fast we want it to come in typically we want it to come in a bit faster and then we want it to hold a little bit because we don't want it to be really wobbly in uh changing the volume of that in the background because every once in a while we take a breath and then we continue you know to talk so we want to have a little bit of a hold period where it waits to see if the uh, volume comes back in above that threshold that we have set here and then if it does it'll continue as if there's nothing there and then uh, once it's below the threshold for whatever this duration is here then how long does it take until it goes where the compressor isn't you know affecting it anymore and it's a nice ease off so that's how the three of those work we'll back up a second so the first one we did is we added the listen onto our uh, vocals and then we'll come into the second track, which is our audio. And in here, we'll have it on listen and we'll turn this on and we'll just listen to it with all the default settings. Today, we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas. And you can see how it's affecting here, right? So it's not really affecting a lot, but if we bring this, this threshold down a bit, so it does it a little bit more. Today, we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue we can areas. hear it's like wavy right side chain. and that's really because we don't have a hold yet so what I'll do is I'll increase this let's do like 150 something in here right and now let's listen to it today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining it's not horrible Side I think maybe it will increase the delay, the or the, excuse me, the release, and increase the hold just a little bit. And bring it back. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. Okay, so pretty much the gap in between here, let's uh, open this up a bit. There's this little bit of a gap here. Uh, not that gap, but there's the secondary gap. It's actually going back up to full volume. volume. Better audio with dialogue areas using... There we are, right here. So whatever the distance is here, it's outside of this hold. So we'll increase the hold just a little bit. Better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. Side chaining takes a lot of work out of the process. And that's sounding a bit better. You can always play around with obviously all these settings. Like I was saying here, ratio is going to be the amount that we're reducing it. Currently, I feel like we're reducing it a pretty good amount. We could, you know, increase that to whatever we want. So I'm a, let's bring it all the way down and all the way up and see what happens. Side chaining takes a lot of work out of the process. Okay, that is pretty substantial. Let's try it again. Today we're diving into getting now, better see how audio much we're reducing with dialogue this? areas. Let's try to bring this back just a little side bit. Side chaining. Side chaining takes a lot of work out of the process. So maybe the ratio is a little too much. We can bring that back a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning and try it again. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. Side chaining takes a lot of work out of the process. So there, you know, it's something that's usable. You could play around with it a little bit more, but this is the best part about this is we're not baking anything, right? So if we had to do something where we had to add extra vocals in wherever, let's say we add it more in, right? It will automatically every time be listening to that track. So we're not baking anything, we're not doing keyframes, we're not doing any of that. So if we have to make an iteration after you know presenting whatever our edit is and more content needs to be added or some needs to be taken out, because we have it set up in this way, there's, like I said, no baking of keyframes or nothing like that, it'll automatically react to whatever our current timeline is. We just have to be cautious of which wherever we have our track is for our audio versus 
wherever we have for the vocals. Now, the other thing that I didn't say is let's add in another one. Now this is gonna start to sound a little weird, but it'll at least help out showing this. If I come back over into Fairlight, so now we currently have, let's close this up a little bit and come in. We have three different audio tracks in play here. All we would need to do, because we have another track, like I said, if we have multiple uh, audio packs, maybe different channels, whatever it may be, we want this other one, so currently it's gonna be track three, we want this to be also a send channel. We can come over and we just have to hit send. So now this middle track is listening to both of those other tracks for when it needs to modify itself. So we'll come back. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. Getting that easy come back. Side chaining takes a Cutting lot it out. of work out of the process. Rolling back. Today we're diving into getting better there we go. audio. Back down with again. Dialogue areas, and we're on a different track. Side so chaining. I think that that kind of can like shows how uh, this works. And you can also, if we had another track here, we could uh, let's throw some actual audio on that track. So if we add another track down here, let's say we take this, this particular one, and we'll cut the end of that off. And maybe, we, or let's have it go halfway through here. So maybe we have a mix, like one chant or one song's going out and the other one's coming in. Okay, we could come back in and then just like that, we could go listen and then we just add whatever we want on to this one as well. Right? I don't know what my settings were. But um, yeah, you just simply add those in and side chaining takes a lot of work out of the process. Today we're diving into getting better audio with dialogue areas using side chaining. Side chaining takes a lot of work out of the process. So there we go. Now we have multiple uh, audio tracks that are ducking with sidechain using a compressor in Fairlight. I think that kind of covers everything. It's not difficult. It is going to make a lot of workflows for a lot of people significantly faster. You won't have to keep going in and, you know, adding keyframes and like I keep saying, because for some, they're not gonna get it until they start doing the process is it's not baked in keyframes, which is the big thing. It constantly listens and depending on if you keep adding sound effects or whatever it may be, as long as you have them in the right tracks, because you're going to be listening to that whole track or uh, sending to that whole track for the compressor to kick in. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of side chaining and uh, easily ducking audio for whatever dialogue that you have. And you, you it doesn't have to be dialogue. You, you know, you could use this for a plethora of different things, but that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, but with that being said, my name's JR. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a good one, guys.